yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Bible Reloaded. I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. Today we're going to do a, a special thing. Yep. We're going to talk about Mormonism, but uh, a, a little different. We had already recorded an episode where we just talked about it in general, but we found this, and I think we like this a little better. We do. We're going to show you a video yep. talking about the tenets and the beliefs of Mormonism, and then we're going to comment on those and add right. as we go. So it's going to be a little different, because we're not going to have like uh, pictures and stuff as much. Uh, we're going to have more video in this one. It'll uh, it'll be a little more organic. It'll feel different. Look at all the moving. Whoa. It's like a movie. I get it now, because they move. We've been doing it wrong the whole time. Yeah. All Clearly right. we need to invest in some animation. Yeah. <laughs> we Fuck have the money for that. Nope. On the zero dollars we make doing this. We make zero. Yeah, so anyways, before we start, uh, anything we need to talk about? Uh, yeah. Um, this is called I'm Mitt Romney and I'm a Mormon. And it's it's only because he's a gateway into Mormonism. We're not really going to get into politics so much. Uh, and by not so much, I mean not at all. Yeah. Um, because we're not a politics show. We're out of that sphere. Um. We, we are care. in polite society. We only talk about religion, never politics. Right. If we're going to talk shit, it's going to be about uh, imaginary people like Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Again, and don't think we're completely one-sided. We talk about President Obama's religion every other week. Christianity. R right. So, uh, anyways, without further ado, uh, we will begin um, the video, and it's called The Secret Life of Mormonism. Also, right before we start, bear in mind... This is an older video. Some of the views may be biased, but for the most part, all the things that it says are honestly what Mormonism yeah. states. So yeah, you can you can fact check it if you want. Yeah. but uh, your fact check will come up in the affirmative. Okay, so here we go. All right. Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. Pause. Pause. Okay. Um. So did you hear that? <laughs> so countless gods. So it's a, it's a polytheistic view. At, at for the most part, the Earth God will you'll later find out in a few seconds. It's one God, but total, it's a, it's a it's a pantheon of gods that control the entire universe, and it's people that were once just people and. Ascended to godhood. Yes, and this is the ultimate goal of people in Mormonism, is right. to become gods themselves, but we will get into that later. But I'd like to point out that how that sounded. Can we play that one more time? Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. Um, I feel like I'm about to watch a really kick-ass animated 1980s, like, Kids movie, where right? It's gonna... Voltron. Do 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 do. We should probably play Voltron right there. From days of long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The legend of Voltron, defender of the universe, a mighty robot, loved by good, feared by evil. We should, but we're gonna get sued. <laughs> We play G.I. Joe. I mean, fuck it. Okay. We'll do that. All right. All right. Unpause. They say that long ago on one of these planets, to an unidentified god and one of his goddess wives, a spirit child named Elohim was conceived. This spirit child was later born to human parents who gave him a physical body. Through obedience... To Mormon teaching and death and resurrection, he proved himself worthy and was elevated to godhood as his father before him. Mormons believe that Elohim is their heavenly father and that he lives with his many goddess wives on a planet near a mysterious star called Korah. Pause. 
Okay, that's a lot we just went through in that uh, roughly 40 seconds. Right. For one thing, I felt like I was watching the intro to, like, a Superman movie. I was like, yeah. Okay, so Elohim to the Mormons is the god, god of Christianity right. as so, well as Judaism. This ye- is just them continuing it. This right. is their backstory as to where God comes right. from. Right, if you remember in um, Genesis 1 where we said... God, you should. The older translations are gods. The word Elohim is that word. It's it's a plural for gods. Yes, but they use that. But as they use the that name. as a singular uh, proper noun. proper noun here. So again, polygamy comes into this. Polygamy is part of right. at least fundamentalist Mormonism. Yeah. Um, the Reformed churches generally don't accept it, but the original church yeah. created by Joseph Smith did. He in fact invented it, and it clearly seeped its way into the origin stories of <laughs> Elohim, yeah. where the gods of the yeah. the universe do uh, engage with lots of different other gods. Correct. But anyways, on pause. <laughs> Here, the god of Mormonism and his wives, through endless celestial sex, produced billions of spirit children. Pause. That sounds fucking awesome. Play that, play that one more time. Here, the god of Mormonism and his wives, through endless celestial sex, produced billions of spirit children. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't have a lot to say about that. I just wanted to, you know. Everyone just should know that Endless celestial sex is a phrase that you can now use. I'm I'm proud. I'm glad I introduced this to you all. You're welcome. <laughs> to decide their destiny, the head of the Mormon gods called a great heavenly council meeting. I love how every single one of them has beards. I know. I think that's a prerequisite for being a god. I <laughs> look at Zeus. Look at look at uh, Jesus. Trident. Not Trident. Trident. Poseidon. 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 I shouldn't be allowed to do this show anymore. (laughs) Trident. It's a gum. He has a Trident. It's a gum. He is Poseidon, right. Anyways, um, I like that they have, like, a council meeting, though. It makes it feel like the Hall of Justice. (laughs) And this is the first of three times you'll see Elohim's face, as far as this exact picture. (laughs) And every single time, no matter the context... He has the same expression on his face. It's I know. super interesting. I love it. Both of Elohim's eldest sons were there. Lucifer and his brother Jesus. A plan was presented to build planet Earth, where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies and learn good from evil. Lucifer stood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world. Warning the glory for himself, he planned to force everyone to become gods. Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of the Mormon Jesus, who would become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one-third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. Thus, Lucifer became the devil, and his followers the demons. All right, pause. Um, <laughs> one thing: wonderful use of rotoscope animation. If right. anyone knows anything about animation, yeah. uh, two, uh, you do. If you didn't notice, Jesus and Lucifer are brothers in yeah. this in this uh, uh, Christian fanfic. Did you notice how fucking just chill he was during that whole? Yeah. Issue? He's like, no, this, yeah. Look at him. Look at me. I'm Jesus, just hanging out. Cool. And the reason is Jesus had a better beard. That's why they went with him. Clear. But the interesting thing about the plan was Lucifer's plan was to force everyone to be gods, where Jesus wanted them to have free will. At the same time, who, if theoretical, obviously we don't believe in this crap, but if asked, do you want to be a god or just go to hell? I'll take the the former. I'll take the god part. I'll be a god, okay. Sure. But the celestial sex. I'm on on board with a with a with a cosmic array of, of a harem. I agree. <laughs> Come on. No, but, uh, okay, so it's like a board meeting. They go with Jesus' proposal. Jesus is going to be the savior. <laughs> Satan is then going to uh, convince some of the angels or gods or what have you to yeah. go with him. So here we but go. But first, we have to see what happens to Jesus. And what about those who just didn't really have an opinion? Uh, yeah. I wonder. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remained neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. 
This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. The spirits that fought most valiantly against Lucifer would be born into Mormon families on planet Earth. These would be the lighter-skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. Okay, uh, um, one thing. For a lot of people, <laughs> this is, for one thing, I'd like to point out, this cartoon is produced by an evangelical Christian right. company. Mm -hmm. So, for reference... It's they don't like Mormonism. I'll give you that. But at the same time, they are accurate. They're not that's making accurate. shit up at all. That is a tenet of Mormonism, and that's one of the reasons that until 1978, black people were not equal in the Church of Mormonism. Right. Oh, for reference, uh, in 1978, the rule changed. Black people then become equal members in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, or the yeah. Mormon Church. Uh, in 1978, Mitt Romney was 31 years old. And a head of a Mormon church. Yeah. So at 31, he was part of an organization that had unequal treatment for blacks and whites. And to be fair, again, taking into context, 1978. This is a little beyond the civil rights movement. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's not as good as today. And today there is still racism. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But still, the 80s was right around the corner. This is the <laughs> point where you should not be acting like this, and not only this, but the the way they're... The ones who were neutral were cursed with dark skin right. to be black, or I assume uh, other dark-skinned Yeah, uh, they peoples. also blame the, uh, like, tan or, like, Native people Americans. People in the Middle East, Native Americans. Yeah. But uh, Native Americans actually come in a little later, but you'll yeah. see that. And did you notice what they call white people? These would be the lighter-skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. Really? Yeah. White and delightsome? I don't like it. I feel racist for being white now. Uh, Thanks, Mormons. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, we're white guys. Surprise! <laughs> Fucking spoilers. <laughs> Early Mormon prophets taught that Elohim and one of his goddess wives came to Earth as Adam and Eve to start the human race. Yeah. So... I just... L wait, hold on. So God... Yep. Is Adam in this Correct. context? And okay. one of his wives is just Eve. Just one of his uh... nameless woman. If yeah. you go back to episode one or two. And not only this, but uh, Mormons believe that uh, the Garden of Eden was in Jackson County, Missouri. And I believe that the Garden of Eden was in Jackson County, Missouri. <laughs> yeah, well put. Anyways, so that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Thousands of years later, Elohim, in human form once again, journeyed to Earth from the starbase Kolob, this time to have sex with the Virgin Mary, in order to provide Jesus with a physical body. What's up, bitch? Here to fuck. Yeah. Oh, um, look at his face. Just look at how he looks. Just, yep. All right, now let's watch that walk up one more time, just how he strolls in, and the way his wrist cocks when he knocks on the door. Oh, yeah. In human form, once again, journey to what? Earth from the Starbase Cola. <laughs> what is this? This time to have sex with the Virgin what Mary. What is this? In order to provide to that Jesus puss. with a oh physical body. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, so Mormons um, um, believe that the Immaculate Conception wasn't really immaculate. They think yeah. it was a physical insemination by God. Yeah. Which is no less silly than... Don't no. get me wrong, yeah. but it's more funny, uh, speaking actually... of imagery. <laughs> yeah, and it obviously, I mean, that denotes a lot of Zeus references and stuff where he actually physically had sex with people to create people such as Hercules and Perseus. And also, did you notice the star-based cola? Yeah, I like that it sounds so sci-fi. Yeah. I like it. Good job, Joseph Smith. <laughs> Mormon apostle Orson Pratt taught that after Jesus Christ grew to manhood, he took at least three wives, Mary, Martha, and Mary Magdalene. Through these wives, the Mormon Jesus, for whom Joseph Smith claimed direct descent, supposedly fathered a number of children before he was crucified. What? <laughs> yeah, so, um... Jesus had three wives, according to Mormon doctrine. And don't get me wrong, I polygamy was a thing when he was... I, I would agree, yes. I mean, it was in Jewish doctrine to uh, okay polygamy if it uh, so 
came about. I think socioeconomically it made more sense then right. as well. It's but... a whole separate thing, but um but yeah. What a retcon. I guess whatever. I mean, it's like doing like Twilight fan fiction. Like yeah. I mean, you can say other things happen. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't in- nothing really happen, but I mean, <laughs> There's a general consensus as to what happened in the fictional canon, and you're going against it just because. Right. Whatever. Um, okay, Mitt Romney, good for you. Yeah. According to the Book of Mormon, after his resurrection, Jesus came to the Americas to preach to the Indians, who the Mormons believe are really Israelites. First of all, does this remind you of anything? No? Let's try it again. Beam me up, God. Nice. 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 Good editing, me. Anyways. <laughs> Alright, so, in what year was it, Jake? It was, uh, according to Mormon doctrine, 600 B.C. Okay, in 600 B.C., according Correct. to the Book of Mormon, uh, Lehi, who was a Jewish man living in, uh, Jer- where was he living in? Uh, he was just living in the Middle East somewhere. Okay, somewhere in the Middle East he was living, and he was... Israelite. Israelite. Uh, and he sailed to America, right. according to them, and this is where Native Americans come from. I don't know how much you guys know about uh, the history of boats. In 600 BC, yeah. the nautical equipment we're dealing with yeah. is not capable of crossing the entire I, ocean. I, for, for reference, anyone else with a little bit historical background, stuff like the Persian War, like where they actually did like have some naval warfare and stuff in Athens between them and Persia, didn't happen for like 200 more years, and those were just Mediterranean. Yeah, we're not talking this. the big ocean. Let's talk about 2,000 years later, another significant historical event happens. Christopher Columbus sails to America with his yeah. three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. They have problems, and it's a trip that takes months. Yeah. And they're not even looking for America. <laughs> or, they didn't necessarily land in North America, but the Americas. Right, and they believe that Native Americans are Israelites. Yeah. You offended yet? Nope. Okay, let's continue. You will be. (laughs) Thus, the Jesus of Mormonism established his church in the Americas as he had in Palestine. By the year 421 A.D., the dark-skinned Indian Israelites, known as Lamanites, had destroyed all of the white Nephites in a number of great battles. Okay, so what you just witnessed they're talking about is from uh, Mormon Doctrine, and it's yeah. talking about the two tribes that came forth from Lehi's family right. after they landed in America. So talk a little about that, Jake. The Nephites and the Lamanites. Yeah, that's not even... <laughs> um. What they say, uh, by 400-something A.D.? Yeah. There's zero fucking evidence of any of that. Yeah. Ever. That's not true. That's a thousand years before Columbus. Yep. And 200 years after that, they started moving a little bit westward. And then you get into the 1700s, obviously the founding of the country as far as Declaration of Independence and all that stuff. Then you really start to move again. No one found any shit like that, ever. No, and I liked that they... And we can find Roman stuff that has been destroyed by the Dark Ages and, like, covered up by volcanoes and shit, like uh, Herculaneum and Pompeii. I mean, we can find all that stuff, but zero fucking evidence in the Americas. Yeah, and I like that the... Again, as we discussed before, there's a uh, light skin, dark skin. Yeah. According to Mormonism, the light skin ones look to be Roman esque in this, yeah, and they're more Roman-esque. advanced. Where, as you see, the darker skin one, what are they called again? Uh, they are called Lamanites. And the Lamanites, uh, who are the darker skinned, are what you would consider more traditional right. Native Americans. If yes. you want to call like Peter Pan animated Native Americans traditional, I apologize, everyone. <laughs> All right. The Nephites' records were supposedly written on golden plates and buried by Moroni, the last living Nephite in the hill Camorra. Fourteen hundred years later, a young treasure seeker named Joseph Smith, who was known for his tall tales, 
claim to have uncovered these same gold plates near his home in upstate New York. Yeah, I like uh, that Moroni uh, covered it up by basically putting like a little Three. box of stones on top yeah. of it. No one will find this shit. Um, so he was the last one, and then they supposedly died out, and that's where you get the the Native Americans that we all know and yeah. destroyed. Um, and so that... then we get to Joseph Smith, who is actually in reality the founder of Mormonism, uh, and they you s- could they call, call him the J.K. Rowling of Mormonism. <laughs> I would agree, and uh, <laughs> they they talk about uh, him being a treasure hunter, and him and his father did, in fact, yeah. treasure hunt using Often. things called seer stones, which are these mystical devices that you put in, like, a bottom of a hat, and it supposedly makes it so you can have almost premonitious psychic abilities, or you can figure out where treasure is. Not true, obviously. Seems legit. Yeah. Uh, and I like that they do call him a teller of tall tales, because, again, this is, I'm as I said before, this is a cartoon trying to defame... Yeah. Mormonism, I'm completely open about that. In a completely accurate way, which is awesome. But uh, he was uh, actually uh, brought to trial for fraud in cases of using seer, using stones, seer stones to try and, stuff, and yeah. uh, help people out with kind of a psychic type of thing. So he was uh, known for being less yeah, than Yeah, and truthful. also they show him as a man finding those golden tablets... In the actual canon of the story, he's only 14 when he first finds the tablets. Then he gets a he gets them and loses them a few times. But uh, that's a whole other deal. That's a, that's we're not going to get into that too much. He is now honored by Mormons as a prophet because he claimed to have had visions from the spirit world in which he was commanded to organize the Mormon Church because all Christian creeds were an abomination. It was Joseph Smith who originated most of these peculiar doctrines which millions today believe to be true. Now here's my rant on Christianity about this. This is painting Mormonism in a bad light for its false doctrine and crazy prophet, but at the same time this is put on by evangelical Christians who have equally crazy doctrine and stupid prophets who don't have any validity to their claims. Right. So pot calling the kettle black, but, you know. Oh, guy from the 20s? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good ref. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. Personally, I think this to be more batshit crazy, but for the simple fact that it's so goddamn young of a religion, and that it completely plagiarizes shit straight from the Bible, and I'm not making that up, it literally does plagiarize the Bible. Which... I mean, I don't care as far as moral issues on plagiarizing go, but uh, according to the Skeptics Annotated Book of Mormon, which uh, also did an awesome Skeptics Annotated Bible, which people should pick up and read, uh, it's great, but uh, there are 775 different points of plagiarism by Joseph Smith in which he quotes the Bible directly on several occasions. And I don't mean he quotes it within the Book of Mormon, and it's like, and this is what it says in the Bible, blah, blah, blah. He takes stuff from, like, Paul, Matthew, Leviticus, and puts it in the same paragraph. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep, and he will he pretends that it's him writing, yeah. or not pretending that it's him writing, pretending that it's Moroni and his father yeah. writing it as the Book of Mormon. Awesome. Good yeah. job, Joe. By maintaining a rigid code of financial and moral requirements and through performing sacred temple rituals for themselves and the dead, the Latter-day Saints hope to prove their worthiness and thus become gods. Okay, so some of the things, they just flew by a bunch of stuff real quick, but quickly I will talk about a few of them. Firstly, mission trips. Mormons as teenagers or when they turn about 18, it's expected and well thought on to go on a mission trip somewhere and be a missionary for Mormonism. Yeah. Uh, I, As I've heard on things like uh, ex-Mormon sites or whatever in research, a lot of them are pressured by their families or church to go do this even if they don't necessarily want to. And I also hear that the conditions on these are not very optimal. You have to ride bikes and you have to do this a certain amount of time a day and you get very little... um comforts. Yeah. Mitt Romney, for one thing, did go on one of these when he was younger. I don't know a lot about the details of that if you want to research it yourself, but just for frame reference, he did do that. Mm -hmm. They talked about uh, secret uh, temple rituals. Luckily, with the advent of things like YouTube, you can now see these. Uh, In fact, we'll do a link in the comments if you want to see it. There are some uh, uh, secret 
quote-unquote Mormon rituals that they do that have been uh, filmed. They had a little quick uh, thing there with uh, a cartoon of them at a cemetery. Well, uh, I think what they're hinting at here is Mormons' proclivity for uh, baptizing the dead. Yeah. And this is something that other religions I've never heard of doing. It's really interesting. They go to, like, a dead person, and they'll say, well... They're dead and in hell because they're not Mormons, so yeah. we're going to baptize them posthumously and say, oh, no, you're a Mormon now. For instance, Mitt, Mitt Rom- Romney had his father after he passed. George W. Romney. Yeah. He had his father baptized as a Mormon after his death. His father was not a Mormon. Right. Um. And funny thing is, uh, I'm not a big fan of some people. Um, I do, I am entertained by Bill Maher as much as he is the antithesis of Bill O'Reilly. I agree. He, uh, he does have some funny things and he actually quote unquote unbaptized George Romney on his show one time. That was pretty funny. Yeah. You guys can check it out in the description box. I don't know how I feel about Bill Maher. He had a whole thing against vaccinations before. Yeah. He's, he did religious, which was awesome. Religious was pretty funny. Some of the information I found, though, uh, after watching it wasn't true. Well, yeah, but documentary. <laughs> well, documentary. With an agenda. Well. True. Anyways, <laughs> continuing. The Mormons teach that everyone must stand at the final judgment before Joseph Smith, the Mormon Jesus, and Elohim. I think it's funny that they have to clarify with the Mormon Jesus. Right? <laughs> like... Yeah, we're evangelical Christians making this video, but look at their Jesus. That's just crazy. Crazy Jesus and his Mormon values. Yeah, our Jesus is much better. Anyways, looking at this, why can't they afford more than one desk? Like, look at <laughs> their Jesus. They're the Mormon Jesus, Joseph Smith, and Elohim. Can't they get like three separate podiums? Is there a podium shortage in Mormon heaven? I don't know. And, That's an issue. And, uh, okay, and. See that? That was the last time that you'll see uh, Elohim's face with that fucking, that little whatever. I don't even know what to call it. Look at it again. See that? What is that? I don't know what even to call He's just like blinking and like kind of like, yeah, I have no problem raping you. Yeah. Anyways. Those Mormons who were sealed in the eternal marriage ceremony expect to become polygamous gods in the celestial kingdom rule over other planets, and spawn new families throughout eternity. Yep. Yeah. That's... that's all. Unpause. The Mormons thank God for Joseph Smith, who claimed that he had done more for us than any other man, including Jesus Christ. The Mormons believe that he died as a martyr, shed his blood for us, so that we too may become gods. To say that you did more for anyone, more for humanity than anyone, including Jesus Christ, I have multiple feelings on that. One, I guess, because I don't think Jesus was anything more than I think Jesus was probably one or multiple people who were amalgamated into a story of one right. guy, Yeshua, um, or. On the other hand, I would say Jesus Christ in the Western world has had an effect on more culture. Absolutely. I mean, in the Western world, whether you believe in Jesus or not, I'm assuming <laughs> listening to this you don't, the idea of him has affected more lives in the Western world than anyone else. Right. It's interesting as an atheist, a staunch fucking atheist, I am almost quasi-offended by the fact that Joseph Smith says he does more for the human race than Jesus. And it's it's almost the pomp pompousness, the pompacity of the whole thing, where he's just like, yeah, totally, uh, totally the shit over here. <laughs> uh, oh, you know that Jesus guy? Oh, he's no big deal. He's <laughs> like my co-captain. He's my Al Gore. Oh, boy. I don't know, man. I, I just don't know. I do like that, uh, the guy at the end, look at him. He's very Jesus. Just look at him, arms spread, ready to be one of the village people. <laughs> Definitely drop some YMCA on them. Yeah. All right. So uh, again, bear in mind this is made by fundamentalist Christians. Yeah. Some of the content uh, very crazy and overblown, but at the same and 
but at the same time, a lot of the things were factually true. And be aware that this isn't necessarily what every single Mormon believes. I don't right. want to make that sort of sweeping statement. It's not. That's like looking at chick tracks and saying every Christian believes everything that it says. Right. Not true. Uh, but this uh, is... for entertainment value, we just thought we'd go over some of the more extreme views. Right. And, uh... And although they are extreme views... They are from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, I don't know. Uh, even with that, uh, while it's not about politics, we thought that one of the presidential candidates, being uh, Mormon, was right. a good entry to kind of talk about this a little bit. Right. Just uh, good fun. And we're showing we're good sports. We're going to talk about some of the things we do like right. about Mitt Romney. Uh, which is pretty good for us, because we hate everybody. I'm All just, right. I'm just kidding. But, uh, first... We like his hair. Look at him. Look at that hair. Like Mr. Fantastic. Oh, God, he could just stretch around me. <laughs> I okay. winked at Hugo. Um, But, yeah, um, and as I mentioned before, dude, 65. Good-looking guy for he 65. Looks really good. I don't know if he's ever worked out a day in his life. I think his money keeps him so youthful. It's the magic underwear. Oh, the magic underwear. You should look up the magic underwear of Mormonism while you're at it. Okay. Um... Number two, he likes trees. And check out this footage from when he was in Michigan uh, during his presidential campaign. A little history. I, I, I was born and raised here. I love this state. It seems right here. The trees are the right height. I love carpet. To be fair, those are nice trees. They are very nice trees. I don't dislike the trees. I agree with him about how they're the right height. Okay, next. Um, number three, and maybe most importantly, Mitt Romney is down with the bitches and hoes. Come on. Who's got your camera, though? <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Who? 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 That was... Okay. That was painful. I'm moving to Canada. <laughs> I mean, of all the things, Baja men? Think about that. I mean, this could be anyone. This is not a knockout. But anybody who would do this, he thinks to himself, uh-oh, these people have black skin. What do I know about black people? Baja men, of course. What kind of crazy and he person? he couldn't even keep the... It wasn't even like, who let the... Do it was... Who let the dogs out? Who? 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 <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Those Some of the Come people on. in that crowd don't even look old enough to know what the Baja men are. I barely know what the Baja <laughs> men are. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Oh. We jest, but uh, in all reality, November 6th is coming up. Very soon this episode is going to be dated, actually, because right. uh, it's coming out a couple days but before. who cares? It doesn't matter what your religious beliefs are or what the candidates are. At the end of the day... You should go out and vote for whoever you think is the best, but make sure you know your reasons. I don't think right. politics should be a team sport. It's Just not. go go out and vote yeah. for whoever. And if you don't like Mitt Romney, don't like him don't. for reasons that make sense. Don't just say, I don't like him because he's a Republican. Or, for this, at the same time, if you don't like Obama, don't just say, I don't like Obama because he's a Democrat. And also, don't go with crazy nonsense shit like, Obama's not American, or Mitt Romney wants to take over the country with his Mormon church. No, he doesn't. No, of course Come not. Come on. I mean, if he does that, I was fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and if Obama turns out to be straight from Kenya, well, he got away from it. Away with it for, you know, four years at least. No, so, come just, on, I mean... Nothing's... It's... People sling a lot of mud, obviously, in campaigns. Yeah. Just... Everyone's just a person. They're both trying to do what they think is right for the country right. at the end of the day. No one is doing it with malice. They're just differing opinions. So, anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful election season. It's mm -hmm. almost done, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, we can get back to watching The Daily Show and not having to do with... With... With any sort of campaign stuff, we can turn on the news and it doesn't have to be fucking primaries and debate bullshit. Yeah. It'll be mind-numbing stupid things. I'm ready for that again. I'm so ready to not have to think intellectually. Anyways, <laughs> well, thanks all for listening to our special episode. Yep. I'm Hugo. I'm Jake. And this has been The Bible Reloaded. That's right. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I put my work
again in the average trio nigga could put And I'm a gangster from my head to my foot Black of the hood, I got the hood behind me The streets go side me, headquartered in the ghetto Man, you know where to find me The mission is laid out and the vision is clear From this moment I run the south and everything down here.